It turns people or whatever cells, living beings, living bodies into amplified antenna. Um, the, the sending and receiving of signals amplified by virtue of this bonding of this, this component, this element, cesium-137. Got it, ladies and gentlemen? It's cesium-137. Well, Now, uh, am, am I to understand that this has replaced graphene? Oh, no, it's just another <laughs> player. It's another player. They're throwing them all out there. They're just burying us uh, with these okay. villains. Cesium-137 binds to all living... Th you heard it. It binds to all living tissues. Well, that may be true. But cesium-137 and cesium-134 have been coming over the north part of... Well, the, let's call it the entire northern hemisphere. Let's just circle the globe. We keep it simple. Cesium-137 and 134 are coming to us 24 hours a day, either in the North Pacific Current or the evaporated moisture from the ocean, which we call clouds and storm systems, or the jet stream from Fukushima for over 10 years. It is deposited on the ground through rainstorms. It goes into the ground. It becomes part of the plants, the vegetable life. It becomes part of the animal life because they're eating the vegetables and, and the grasses. They're getting cesium-137, too. Cesium-137 is not going to be hard to find in anyone. But this gentleman is suggesting that it is part and parcel and only found in what are called hydrogels. That's what he's saying. That they're and in and, the and it's virtually in all injectables and has been in all injectables for some time. No, you're, you're eating cesium-137, you're drinking it in, in the cow's milk because they're eating the grass, which is coming up through soil that is being rained upon with cesium-137, 134, and strontium and all manner of things that are being spewed out by the melt, the melted reactors at Fukushima. Okay, so this is a very clever way. They can take they can take anyone into a lab and test them and probably come up with cesium-137. But it's not from the hydrogels. We've been we've been in, involved with this issue of uptaking 137 for over 10 years. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. They found it in dairy cattle within uh, one week of, of the uh, explosion at Fukushima, or one of, the, one of them blew up anyway. A couple, couple melted, one blew. Nonetheless, they have found it in dairy cattle milk in New England within a week of the blast, the initial blast at Fukushima. That's how quickly the radiation made it all the way across and began its uh, circling, circumnavigating, of the northern hemisphere around the planet. Yep, I remember. Okay, so there's another one for you. It's those damned hydrogels that are carrying cesium-137. Never mind Fukushima. Never mind that it's well entrenched in our entire environment and ecology.